Okay, awesome. So, when we are actually curating the lot of these talks, uh, most of the talks when we are looking at these all contents, right? The interesting, there is a lot of good diversity of uh, talks, right? So, there are only few case studies. So, lot of, there are a lot of theory stuff which was knowledge was shared and we thought like, you know, why not show something already something has been done, some case study so that people can know like, you know, how it worked for me in my organization for my project. <coughs> I'm going to share you guys a project case study about designing a brand new enterprise application for a new market category, okay. <coughs> I'll be skipping very fast some of these slides because uh, generally case studies are not, uh, you can't do it in 18 hours, this one, cool. So how many of you are from enterprise background, work for enterprise products? One, two, three, four, okay, quite a few. <coughs> so, what is enterprise product? Enterprise product are B2B products, right? Business to business product, which are mission critical, which are big, huge, lot of users use it. it business runs of it. If something, if product is down, it's pretty hard. Your business gets into losses. So, <coughs> so when you are building an enterprise product, you can't build directly. It's not that like, you know, you just work three months and build an enterprise product. It's just like a huge ship, right? Look at that, huge. And if you want to build, it's gonna take some years. Okay, generally like, you know, you take three years, four years, five years. You keep learning on the path of it and you build that particular product. And it has the same thing. You design it, you think a lot in terms of how you want to build it, how you want to scale it and then it also most of the performance thing, right? The engine, it's not just design. There are multiple parameters, security and all of this stuff. <coughs> when you are actually designing for a uncharted category, which is new market category, which doesn't exist anymore. That means what does uncharted territory means? Which means there is no competition. First time you are introducing and creating a market no users or no competition. So it's tough. It's tough for a designer to design a product like that, right? So you don't have any references. So how do you handle this? So I'm going to showcase how we did it in Informatica and <coughs> how we got actually it's an award winning product. So that's what I'm going to show you guys. So everyone knows that, right? Data is a new oil. Everyone wants to steal it, whether it's going to be a personal data or official data, confidential data, right? So you see a lot of breaches happening everywhere, right? You go whether it's Target or look at any company right now, right? Everyone is scared. Data is getting stolen. So according to this uh, Phenomenon Research 2014 report, the minimum, min, minimum suit, lawsuit file was around 7.2 million. This is scary, right? So every organization has a problem. <coughs> so this is a problem. This is an unsolved problem. So there are a lot of security softwares around. But still, the problem is there is security which happens at application level, host level, or network level, or any at all perimeter level. So that's an old world where you actually block at some network level. But these days, right, with all these sensors and uh, all these sensors and mobility, right? So people are just move out, move in, use multiple devices. So that's where what's happening. So you really can't predict who is accessing from there. The perimeter, whole perimeter is gone with this mobile world, right? So <laughs> we came with an approach. Being Informatica, it's a data centric company and we are investing on innovation on data from last 20 years. So we know about data than anyone's in the market, right? So what we did was, see, if you protect the data at data level, doesn't matter where it get proliferated, whether it's a mobile or like, you know, it gets into the perimeter or you access from anywhere in the world. So, 
how did we solve this problem? So we came up with, so when this product got started, right? So we came with the concept demo. No team built. There is no development team, no QA team, only UX guys. So we came with a storyboard. Okay, this is a story we want to tell, saying that, okay, this is a story. Your interface tells you this is the problem solution. Came with one person now, created this storyboard and created a pretty nice, beautiful demo. And we have a user conference where more than 3,000 Informatica users come there. And our CEO showcased this in his keynote. And that really went very well. A lot of analysts and a lot of uh, people really started liking it and people did, the concept got validated. And finally, <coughs> you want to build that product. So how do you build product? The concept demos, like you know, being a designer, you can create awesome demos, right? So, so we thought going with a hybrid lean methodology will help to build a product. So, simple thing, right? We all know. Three steps. Let's do a collaborative design model. Think, make, and check. At every stage of your product design, do these three activities. <coughs> okay. So that's the methodology. So what we did is, so how do you want to go forward? How do you want to build the product? So we came up with four approaches. One is requirement phase, jumpstart phase, design phase, and monitoring phase. So requirement phase is more of, we all know that, getting into requirements, creating some demos and concepts and stuff like that. And the jumpstart is more of workshop, enabling the, it's uh, getting into same thing. And design is more design activity stuff, where right from wireframing, conceptual design, visual design, uh, accessibility, validations and stuff, and your specification and documentation. And monitoring is more of uh, validation, expert reviews and stuff like that. <coughs> okay. So looking to the timeline, I just want to showcase your timeline so you get a little bit overview of like, you know, what we did, various design activities, how are they going in parallel? So this is the concept demo which was demoed. What you see is that is Informatica World 14. And the timeline is we want to release a product by next year Informatica World, right? <laughs> it started with design workshop. Then you went into the high level design. Then you do the detailed design somewhere around. And the, from detailed design, when you get the concept thing right, it gets split into multi-level design activities. You start visual design, you start development, you start into accessibility and stuff like that, and you do some heuristic evaluations and stuff. So multiple things are coming up. If you see that, right, it's getting piled up. You have alpha testing, you have UX governance going in, and usability testing. So we all know what are these stuff, right? So these are like, you know, multiple level activities. Let me show you a couple of things, how we actually did the product when we don't have an access to user. So obviously we all know it. So you start with personas, creating personas, <coughs> getting details about what's the um, uh, details about like, you know, how, what, uh, what is his behavior and stuff like that, products used. It's a typical regular personas. So we categorize four primary personas. One thing which we realized in this journey is that your personas also keep evolving. It's not that like, you know, you design a persona, that's a persona. We need to check the, this thing. Once your requirements are going up, new personas keeps coming up. <coughs> and came up with a design philosophy. So sometimes what happens is, your other product design philosophy don't work with all, it's same like, you know, one shoe will not fit all sizes, right? Same like that. So you need to think about uh, various design philosophies. The same thing, some of them are regular list, like because this is a security product, speak the language of security. Speak the language of user. Or relay more on data visualization and infographics. Or something like, you know, something create a world-class UI, visually rich appealing UI. 
or maybe like you know make it a enters with very fast multi like you know for big data scale. So these are some philosophies we did. So this is where we started the project where you started with this story mapping. So this story mapping right so it's story mapping one good part about story mapping what we did is from initially we involved whole the organization right from GMs to engineering to all stakeholders to everyone so that everyone is part of this participatory design program. So <laughs> we did this whole exercise, it's a three day workshop. We completely dedicated about understanding the requirements of everyone on the page. So you did whole this mapping. So we have different, you see this right, like you have task, you have story. these all are stories by the way. So all stories in different, different colors, so categories and stuff, so you just did that whole mapping of it. And then you drive all the philosophies and personas to the team. <coughs> then you do the story analysis, right? Then you start looking at Kano analysis. So Kano analysis is a process which helps you to prioritize things, which helped you to define what are the basic needs, what are the top things, satisfied and delighted things. So this is a Kano scale. So this is a satisfaction industry. In, so access to satisfaction index and index in the investment index. So when you start putting all these stickers in that particular thing, right? So these are some of the results which uh, we got for Kano analysis thing. <coughs> like we got five delighters. These are the stories. And you got this way we prioritize all these stories. And because like, you know, you have a four years roadmap, right? So it's pretty hard for a designer or a team to actually prioritize, prioritizing is an art, right, and a business. So it's pretty tough to actually do the prioritization thing. So this really helped us to make all priorities. <coughs> then you did the whole this sketching and interaction mapping. You sketch all of them. And other thing is interaction mapping. So all your concepts, get, you did the whole thing and you already mapped everything. So you know the whole nervous system of the product then everyone knows this. Once you know the system, how that is connected thing, you look at the grid constant, look at the orientations of it, how do you want to make the product orientation, it's a mobile based or iPad based. And then you created the whole information architecture content, patterns, structures and all of the stuff, right? And then you get into multiple level wireframes and you do the wireframes. So sometimes these wireframes went into 10 iterations, 12 iterations and stuff. <laughs> and you came up with a pretty nice visual design, okay? Uh, so it can into three, four iterations and stuff like that, but you want to be really rich looking interfaces, even it's an enterprise product, so even enterprise orders also want rich UX, right? So you came up with this and created your whole design language, so kind of thing. So let me tell about a little bit about validation and research, how did we do? So few things on accessibility friend. So what we did was, it's more of like, you know, sc screen reader friendly where you did color contrast, a uh, few basic things in terms of like, you know, whether your screen reader reads and stuff, and 12 concept validations. And three heuristic evaluations. Around alpha test we used 20 users, and uh, usability audit is two users and beta tests. Let me show you a couple of things. This is a screenshot from expert review audit. So, so she is Shima, she is one of our researcher. She was moderating the program. And you see other UX architects and other UX designers who don't know about anything of this product. So you'll be given a task, they will perform that particular task and write in those stickies and we keep those stick everywhere. And our researcher will actually collate the feedback and give us. And this was other way of mechanism of feedback where you don't have a user, use all internal users to take feedback. So if you see this, this is an alpha testing program. Once you have at the alpha stage, so we invited around 20 people from across organization, sales, marketing, engineering, QA, doc, and others. And <laughs> everyone will be given a task they need to perform and they will file a bug log or UX bug. And after that, 
there were pretty good, interesting feedback we got. We got around like 550 bucks filed by these guys. And interesting thing is, there are around 40 or 50 bucks which are, which was not captured by QA, or we don't, we, even like UX. There were also usability bucks, we don't even know that. So then we did a survey, and this survey was done with all these 20 people on these parameters, overall UX, um, on the installation rules or some of these features. And we got this pretty good ratings in terms of, because if you 20 people has done your testing, so you know almost uh, even it's, they work as a proxy users, right? <laughs> this is one of the round table thing which we did. These are CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers. So you can't really get into usability lab or you can't get the time for that. So we organize some events to showcase them and taking their pain points listening to them, like, you know, what scares them as an organization, as a head of the organization, what scares them. And then we release the product, and finally we, we won one of the prestigious award, gold award in the world's biggest RSA conference. So let me tell you a couple of things. So this is the whole story of the, this thing. So what are my learnings in this whole story thing? So I'm going to share you five learnings which I learned. One is early feedbacks and proxy users. Guys, we are designers, okay? Don't wait for something which gets shipped. Try to get validated internally. Find some other teams. People are not dumb. People give you feedback. Take the feedback. Second, you are, when you're designing a product, think about scale. Today is not tomorrow, and tomorrow is not day after tomorrow, right? So let's say you have 10 use cases today. It will get scaled to 20. After three years, it becomes 100. How your structures work, how your architecture work, how your UI components work, how your UX work overall. So when we are actually doing that whole UX architecture phase, think about all those components, how it's going to behave. Third, quick to market. This is very interesting thing which we need to focus on. Because we designers love, like if you give, the, give us time, right? We keep designing, 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 designing. We'll take ages to design because we'll never get satisfied. If we get satisfied, we're not designers, right? So we, keep, we love to do iteration. We love to do better all the time. But thing is, we'll miss the market out. We need to ship it. We need to decide. We need to prioritize. We need to ship at certain point of time. Somewhere, because like you can't make 100% better all the time. So you need to ship it and grab that opportunity and market. <coughs> Fourth, UX comments. So this is one of the key thing. You should not say that like, you know, QA, it's not my job, let QA will do it. A dev, it's not my job, let them care. As a UX designer, we should actually take care of everything. We should actually look at the help QA, help dev, help doc, be a catalyst, be a user advocate and actually look at the whole governance of the product. Become a right hand of the product manager. It should be like, you know, design, product management, and engineering. It should be like that, it's a triangle, right? And finally, finally, one big recommendation for all UX designers here in the room is influence teams. Don't let your product manager tell you, put the button here. Or don't make yourself as something like, you know, prototyper. Don't make yourself, make yourself so valuable, guys. You are designers. You should change the world. You should influence team. If like, you know, so you don't, you are not there to put buttons or whatever, like, you know, your product manager, your team manager, your, your manager or developer said, right? You are there to basically design a solution or solve a design problem where others cannot do it. So be valuable, you are a designer. Keep it in mind all the time, you are a designer. You are so precious, no one knows about it. Evangelize it, evangelize about designer and solve interesting problems, okay? Make your business help business. Thank you guys.